Hi, good morning. I'm Kenny from Dr. Martin's, and this is Tara from Premira. Uh, the little video that I showed there uh, was part of a bigger excerpt that we've been using within our organization to move Dr. Martin's forward to a digital first business. Um, probably a few years ago, working in a consumer goods company, I would have been standing here talking about our digital strategy. But now, really, what we talk about is our Dr. Martin's business strategy in a digital world, which is probably no surprise to anybody in this audience. Um, I've also got a 19-year-old daughter who grew up in a digital world. If you look at the vast majority of people who work for Dr. Martins around the world, they're sub-25. So for them, they really only think about a digital world. Um, I would feel like a bit of a fraud trying to tell you that we're absolutely fantastic at digital, and clearly there's, I assume, loads of people in this room that know a lot more about digital than me. But what makes Dr. Martin's really special is who we are as a company and who we are as a brand. Uh, fundamentally, this business was founded back in 1960 when the Griggs family met the Funk and Martin's families and came together to make the first Dr. Martin's boot. Uh, the 1460 that I'm wearing today, so-called because it was made on the 1st of April 1960. It's still our best-selling product today. The reason is that it was made perfect the first time around. And I saw some of you put your hands up when the question was asked, have you worn a pair of Dr. Martens? Um, if you talk to our consumers, the real reason that they wear Dr. Martens is, first and foremost, that we make a great product, but probably even more importantly is the emotional connection that they have with our brand. Dr. Martens, as it says on the screen, is all about rebellious self-expression. Uh, this is a brand that people wear because they dare to do things differently. We often talk about the fact that only dead fish swim with the stream. If you're a Dr. Martin's consumer, you want to unite with people around you. And you want to do things in a unique and disruptive way. And it's that emotional connection that's making the organization successful right now. If you look at the journey that we've been on, it's very different to some of the presenters from this morning. We started first off, as I said, as a manufacturing company. And We've evolved first into a business that sold wholesale. So we sold to bricks and mortar stores around the world with our product. And then under Premier's ownership, where the company has gone to is an omni-channel business where we've built our own stores and we've built e-commerce sites around the world. The journey that we're now taking the team on is to really think about consumer first. Most consumers today don't really care where they buy our goods, they think, how is it going to be easiest for me? Where can I get the best possible experience? And for us, the most important thing now is to understand her. If she's buying in our store in Paris Forum Leal, if she's buying online, it's really to understand more about her, more, more about her life, and really be obsessed about how she's living her life and what she's doing. So if that's who we are, how are we doing? Well, a singular focus on the brand has meant that the company's growing very nicely. If you look at the yellow bar, that represents the company's revenue growth. In the last year, we've grown by 22%. We've gone from 250 million in revenue to 350 million in revenue over the last two years. In terms of by channel, the gray bar basically shows our direct consumer revenue, which is up by 28%. And then not surprisingly, for most consumer goods companies, the e-commerce portion, which is shown there in black, is growing by 37%. So Dr. Martins is growing across all channels. And probably one of the things that makes us different to many consumer goods brands out there right now is we're growing like for like performance within our stores as well. Most people know Dr. Martens as a British brand, um, but to give you a bit more of the background, that's probably an outdated view of the world now. We do 45% of our revenue within Europe and 55% outside of Europe. So we're well represented now in North America. We're also well represented in Asia Pacific. Um, and I think that clearly, with a brand with the high levels of awareness that Dr. Martens has, there's a huge opportunity for us to grow in every territory in the world. Um, the way that we're going to do that basically touches on the last point in that little video I showed at the beginning. The gentleman there said, you know, the e-commerce companies are those people who started as pure players are now starting to open stores. We see that in multiple places. 
People like ourselves who started in bricks and mortar are clearly having to embrace digital, one of the reasons why we're here. So what you see is that we're balancing our online and our offline presence. So on the left-hand side of the screen as you look at it, you see the fact that over the last two years, we've opened on average 20 stores per year. Um, I think there it says 94 stores. Obviously, in our new financial year, we've now broken through the 100 store barrier. 100 stores is not really very much for a, for a brand of this scale. And I think in a digital world, one of the challenges for a consumer goods brand is how do you give that experience in store? How do you make it meaningful for consumers to come to you, but at the same time also serve them in a digital way? And on the other side of the screen, you probably see the biggest single opportunity that Dr. Martins has as a business. We've gone to doing 13% of our business online now, two percentage point growth per year. Um, as we move into our new financial year, that growth is actually accelerating. So like many of the speakers who've talked this morning, we have a real opportunity to embrace a more digital environment. One area though that we are doing extremely well as a consumer goods brand is going back to what I talked about at the very beginning about rebellious self-expression. We're engaging consumers in a very meaningful way on social media. So just recently, we got some very good news that we were announced as, as it says there, the biggest UK retail winner on Instagram. So an agency, Red Hot Penny, looked at the UK marketplace and said, who are the brands that are really engaging consumers online? And we came out number one on Instagram. Partially the reason that that made us really proud is we're punching well above our weight. So I think if you look at the the left-hand side, if you combine Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all the social channels, the number one brand in the UK is actually Nike. But you look at their revenues, they're somewhat in the region of 29 billion. If you look at us, little Dr. Martins, they're number four. You know, much smaller revenues, but creating very high level engagement with consumers. And on the right-hand side of the page, you see our status as the number one most engaging brand in the UK on Instagram. And what that looks like, is that 17% of consumers engage with a post from Dr. Martin. So they either like it, they share it, they comment upon it. If you compare us to our competitors, Vans, a multi-billion company at 11%, Converse, 9%, Timberland, 8%. And again, the thing that makes us different there is the consumers really get into our brand, they get into the alternative nature of our brand, the music that is associated with our brand. And as a consequence, we may not be the best player in digital, but people engage with us in a really meaningful way, which is driving our sales performance. So that's an overview of who we are. Uh, Tara is now going to ask me a couple of questions. Yeah. Do you want to? Thanks, Kenny. So we're at a digital conference. Um, you've touched on our online sales and our social media performance. Um, how digitally minded really is the company today, and where do you want to get it? Um, so I think I've answered that the, the, the other way around. Um, I think where we want to get to is we want to be a digitally focused and digitally first company. And, and we're not there right now. We've just hired uh, a chief digital officer to help us on that transformational journey. I think in terms of how we're doing, um, I think we're doing really well on social media because it plays to the things that the brand is really good at, which is about engaging with consumers. I think in terms of e-commerce, um, as I showed there, we're only doing 13% of our sales online. So I think relative to the brands that I've worked on historically and also many of the companies we've heard about this morning, we're probably a bit of a laggard. Um, but we've just replatformed the Dr. Martin's website. We've hired some new people to focus on our user experience and, and now we're delivering big growth. Um, in terms of retail tech, I'd also say we're a little bit behind the curve. Uh, we've only recently introduced order in store, which again, most of the brands I've worked on before have had and we're just trialing click and collect. So um, probably in catch up mode. And uh, then one area that we're really focusing on to be a digitally focused company is internal communications. Um, as I said at the beginning, most of our employees are sub 25. They do everything on their phones. Um, so we have a number of sharing communities with a global company like we've got. We're trying to create global leverage across the business. So we have Google Plus communities where our young colleagues can share information. And even someone like me who's a bit older, I have my own Google Plus community called Kenny, Kenny Comms, where uh, more than half the company now are engaged on that and it enables me every week to send short videos out to the team and, and short points of communication. So we want to be a digitally first company and I think we're on a journey, if I'm honest. Great. And um, one of the things we didn't say in the slides, Kenny, is that this brand has 60 years of heritage. You talked about the 1460 boot. 
Um, we've come from an incredibly long heritage. I was actually wondering whether we may be one of the oldest or the oldest companies um, at this conference today. So we've got 60 years of heritage. When you look forward, um, what is your level of ambition for the company? What do you think it can be? Yeah, I mean, I think Dr. Marks as a company can, can be so much bigger. I mean, I showed our last year's revenues at 350 million. The target we've set for the business internally is to be a billion pound company. Uh, within our next strategic plan horizon. I think that's very realistic when you look at the opportunities we got for channel expansion and, and geographic expansion. So financially, our goal is to, to multiply the company three times at least. Um, probably the most important goal, though, is um, the nurturing and the management of the brand. I think that, as I've shown on the slides, the thing that makes us special is not our digital prowess. What makes this company special is an iconic brand that's been around for a long time. And, Myself and the management team feel privileged that fundamentally we'll be the custodians of the brand for a period of time, but we want to leave it in even greater health than it is today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.